Hello YouTube friends. I'm going to try and do this without the mic on because I'm going to be walking about. But I have just discovered that I've no bread for lunch. And uh, so and um, it's 10 to 2 and I haven't had any lunch. <laughs> I've been driven in from the garden because it's actually raining. Brilliant. So I'm going to make 10 minute scones uh, to have for lunch. Uh, so I'll put the oven on now because it, they'll be ready to go in in less than 10 minutes, in fact. So I'm going to use the trusty old Biro book again. So great, it's a great little book, falling apart book, held together with sellotape. And um, I'm going to see how long this takes. Not long. OK, then, so the trusty old Biro book, uh, which does everything in ounces but and grams as well so i tell you what i'm going to be a sort of grams sort of girl today i think yeah so okay i only need a few it's just for me and whoever else turns up this afternoon so we need 150 grams of self-raising flour i'm a very messy cook i clean it up 150 grams of self-raising flour and I'm going to go off the um, recipe because I always do, but I'm going to put a teaspoon of baking powder in because um, I want these scones to rise. So a teaspoon of baking powder. Um, I might as well put my pinch of salt in now. Pinch of salt, it's going to need it. And um, 25, it says margarine. We don't do margarine. We're big fans of butter in this house, so I'll zero that. What do we need? How much uh, margarine? Butter? Uh, 25 grams, that's not very much. Okay, it wants 25 grams of butter. So that's 37, that'll do. I like butter. Uh, na, 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 na. Salt, margarine. Um, then it wants powdered mustard, but I haven't got powdered mustard. This is what I've got. Uh, just a little bit of this uh, Cumberland mustard. So I'm actually going to put that in and mix it in. It'll be fine. Trust me. OK, then. So I just need to mix those together. Just check. Uh, salt. Oh, it wants some pepper as well. OK, so I'll put a little bit of pepper in soon as I've done this and my hands are clean. So basically all I'm doing here is I'm just rubbing it in between my fingers and my thumbs. You know what I'm doing. You've done this yourselves hundreds of times, I'm sure. I just need a quick bit of something for my lunch. Okay, so that's mixed in nicely. The, the less you handle this kind of stuff, the lighter and the better it is. Okay, so I'll, I'll get a little bit of pepper, excuse me, I have my pepper in this little pot here. Just a little pinch of pepper, that would be lovely. Now, what do you need now? Um, 75 grams of cheese. So let's see, I've got some cheese here, let's see how much there is. Okay, there's twice as much cheese as I need there. So I'll grate some of that into here then. Uh, I use the coarse grater because it's quicker and it's all nice and chunky. So I'm just going to put half of this in here, just by eye. So look, about that much cheese. So we'll mix that in. Flour, salt, pepper, mustard, butter, cheese, and then one egg and a tiny bit of milk. Let's get the milk. I've just been down to collect the eggs, and I've got this very weird shaped egg. So uh, rather than um, 
put that out in my egg honesty box. I'll have that on myself. This is from one of the rescue hens and it's a very weird misshapen egg. Okay, one egg. And so now we'll just mix that egg. It's still a great egg, but it's just in a, a weird shaped package with quite a thin shell when I cracked that. Right, we're on five minutes and 30 seconds. So I'm gonna try and do this finished and in the oven within 10 minutes. Should manage that. Tiny bit of milk. Sometimes I haven't got any milk because I only buy milk for visitors. I've just had a visitor. I've just had the most lovely visit from my daughter who was on her way back from somewhere and she popped in. And we've put the world to rights. It's been fantastic. Now, I'm going to get my hand in there. And as I said to you a minute ago, the less you handle this stuff, the better. Don't worry about that bit on the floor. I'll pick it up later. Okay. Now, I could now roll this out and cut it with a cutter. But I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to do this quite differently. I use this board here because it's here. A little tiny bit of flour on here. I'm going to put the dough on here. I've hardly mixed that at all. I'm just going to pat it down. I'm not even going to use a rolling pin. I've got the rolling pin out, but I'm actually not going to use it. I'm just going to pat it into a big circle like that. And then I'm going to grate some more cheese on top. And spread that all around. And then, actually I could have done that straight onto there, couldn't I? I will. I'm going to transfer it before I cut it into here. Yeah, it'll be easier to transfer once it's on there. So I'm going to press that down. Now if I had a little bit more egg, I would brush the top with egg, but I'm not worried about that. These are just a quick thing for me to have for my lunch. So now I'm going to cut this. I'm trying to get you a bit nearer so you can see. I'm going to cut this into six. I'm going to cut one like so. And then when I do this, I'm kind of like imagining it's like a clock face. And so I'm doing every 10 minutes. <laughs> so I'm cutting slices of 10 minutes or so. 10 minute slices, just about right. Just press that cheese on where it's fallen off. And actually, yeah, the oven's come up to temperature while we've been doing this. That's it. I'm gonna jam those into the oven now for, well, this probably says 12 minutes. 10 to 15, it says, which is 12, isn't it? In it goes. That's the bit I dropped on the floor, in the bin. Done. It says I'm on eight minutes and 40 seconds. Well, I'm happy with that. Including clean up, 10 minutes. Okay then, so I'll put the oven on for, we'll put it on for 12 minutes, because I think that's going to be about right. So 12 minutes, time for a clear up. And then I won't have lunch in the pavilion today on account of the rain. I've just brought all the cushions and things in, so that's good. And then that one will be a delicious lunch with maybe a bit of salad or something, I don't know. We'll see. See you back here when they're out of the oven. So when my daughter was here a few minutes ago, uh, just before I made the scones, we talked about loads of things and one of them was uh, we went and had a look around the garden. She's a great gardener. <laughs> great gardener. And uh, we were looking at all the stuff that I dug out of the garden over the weekend and where the gaps are now and what I could possibly plant in those gaps. So I've got a little, I've got all my seed um, stuff out <laughs> and I've got a little uh, pile of stuff 
that I can direct sew. So we were talking about I'm going to direct sew some of them into the gaps that I've uh, created by digging up the uh, the garlic and the potatoes and um, the broad beans are finished now and that kind of thing. And so I'm going to, because it's raining marvellously, I can be in the polytunnel this afternoon uh, doing some modules and um, some uh, little seed tray modules uh, of carrots, uh, rainbow chard, uh, more Cavallo Nero. I've got some more Swiss chard here, which is just orange Swiss chard. Have I got any in there? Yeah, yes. And then there's this one, the early prickly seeded spinach. Anyone might give that a miss? Because I find the leaf beet and the Cavallo Nero is actually better uh, than spinach is a tricky thing to grow. I've got some radish, some more radish, two different sorts, because they're always nice to have. They're a very quick crop. You can be eating those three weeks after you've planted them. I've dug out the flat leaf parsley seed. Uh, there's loads in there, so I'm going to grow some more of that. Flat leaf parsley um, grows this year and is good the next year, but it's just two years. You then have to plant it again. And this stuff in the garden at the moment is two years. I've got some lettuce. I've got more chives and some coriander. Now, I don't like coriander at all, but some people do. So I'll plant that to, for other people. And then some rocket. Now, I planted this rocket that's called Dragon's Tongue. And um, it's peppery and it tastes great, but it's actually very tough leaves. So I'm not liking it very much. So I'm going to put this in instead. Uh, okay, so that's good. I've got, we've sorted all those out. Um, that I find the growing guides on the back to be invaluable. That's what I go off. That's there. You know, someone's worked that out. However, what they haven't worked out is um, the north of England. <laughs> I'm a little bit further north than um, some of the people who are pr planting these out in August. I'm not going to get much going in August, although this has been a funny year. You know, it's been a funny year. Who'd have thought I'd be sowing anything this time of year? And then the other thing, I've got some peas uh, to go in the gaps where the peas have finished. and uh, But I'm soaking those seeds so that when I put them in, they've got a little bit of a head start. So oh, that's all good. Uh, chives and then these things, nasturtiums. I've got a few of those. I might just pop those around here and there because they're very cheerful things. Colourful, cheerful. You can eat the leaf and the flower, but you can also just enjoy seeing it growing. So we'll do a little bit of Mr. Scones are ready. Let's see what they're like. They look okay. I'll have one now. Let's put them on the cooling rack and just separate them so that they cool evenly. And there we have six scones. I don't need six scones, but I do need one. Oh. Ten minutes gone. I'm going to have it with a cup of tea. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Let's hope we get lots of rain.